Hey guys, I'm Eric here. Uh, in this video, I will show you the basic setup you need when you get the ESP32 TTG your first time. When I first received it, I didn't know what I should do first. That's what I felt. ESP32 TTG T display is a product with a 1.14 inch IPS panel. Since it is equipped with a display, it will be necessary to output the image on the screen by default. So I think this video is the first practice project that you have to do after receiving the product. Also, I reckon we can do many interesting projects with this product sooner or later. If you are interested, please subscribe to my channel and watch the latest projects right away. Okay, let's get started. As I said, let's start from the very beginning. I connected the device. Once connected, select the board first. Uh, select tool, board, ESP32 Arduino, TTGO T1. If you can't see the ESP32 Arduino, you didn't have the additional URL for the ESP32 board. Go to the preference of the Arduino IDE. You can see the additional board manager URLs below. Click the icon to the right. A URL on the first line is required. The URL is described below. The second line is for ESP8266 boards, so you don't need this for this project. Uh, after registering this, it starts to download all ESP32 boards. Uh, the following is the USB2 UART bridge driver. TTG board uses the USB driver of Silicon Labs. If you can see the connection to the port, uh, please install the driver from the homepage below. Everything you need to run your hardware is ready. Now I prepare what I need to draw the screen. Uh, TTGO has several versions. The most common version has the IPS 1.14 inch display with ST7789V. The necessary library for drawing on the screen is TFT ESPI. I've done lots of the projects with this library so far. Uh, TTGO can also use this library to print out on the screen. Please install it if you don't have it. Uh, it's already the same. TFT ESPI must be set for the current display. Uh, go to the Arduino Libraries uh, TFT ESPI folder. Unlike the other display settings, let's open the User Setup Select header file. Uh, come out the User Setup header at line number 22. Instead, use the TTGO T display at line number 53. It's easy to use because it has all the settings for ST7789V. I just finished set up the display. It's easy, right? Uh, now it's time to check the display output. Uh, let's open the example source code TFT ESPI provides. Uh, because you have installed TFT ESPI, you can open all sample code in Arduino examples. For your information, the TTGO T display has a resolution of 240 by 135. Let's open an example of Pong version 3, which is the closest to this resolution to 160 by 128. Uh, I'm gonna only change the values of width and height and leave the rest. Uh, let's build an upload. This is simply to make sure that display is up normally, so there is nothing to explain. Uh, the screen is being printed. Uh, the below screen text uh, TFT ESPI example is very impressive. Uh, erasing text by moving the board is because after the board's movement, it doesn't redraw the text. Anyway, it's been confirmed that it's being printed properly. Uh, from now on, we will work to put files into flash memory using the ESP32 SPI file system. Eventually, to play an animation, you need to have uh, several image files internally. Uh, if you already have ESP32 sketch data upload, you can move on to the next one. Arduino ESP32 file system upload makes it easy to put files into flash memory. First, download the tool from that page. Uh, after unzipping it, and you see the ESP32FS folder. You need to copy it to the Tools folder in the Arduino folder. After that, you will now see the ESP32 sketch data upload from the Arduino Tools menu. Uh, from now, I'm going to show you how to create the necessary images. Uh, personally, I really love the movie Her. Also, I'm a big fan of Joaquin Phoenix, so I will look for the loading image that came out that movie. You don't need to search from Google. Just get the GIF image you want. Uh, let me show you how to modify this GIF and split it into multiple JPG files. Uh, 
In my experience, it's possible on Photoshop, but it's the easiest way is doing it on the web. Especially I could handle GIF image in the way I want from easygif.com. Uh, there are many similar websites, so you can use other websites. Uh, the first thing I need to do is cropping. Since the size of the image I'm going to use is bigger than the display, so I will cut the GIF image to the display size. After you upload your image, you can cut it as long as you want from any point. I'm going to cut the image according to the display resolution and save it as a file again. If we check the saved GIF image, you can see that the resolution of the image is the same as the resolution of the TTGO display. It looks good. Uh, let's go back to the web page, and now let's extract the images for each frame. Uh, from the menu, select Spread. Uh, select the resized GIF file and upload it. Uh, under the Spread option, select the JPEG format. Uh, click split to frames below to print the image from each frame. Uh, download to a G file. The GIF image I use is divided into 24 pictures. Uh, unzip the download the G file, then we can finally get JPG images. The last thing to do is to number the file. When we read this file, we need the exact path of the file. So it's better to simply put the numbering after the same file name as a prefix. So in my case, the file name is the image, underbar, and sequence number. All looks good. Let's change the folder name to data. When using ESP32 to sketch data upload, the folder name must be data because it copies the data folder in the project folder to flash memory. Now move this data folder to your own project folder. I have already created the project called animation image for the first time. Uh, go back to the Arduino IDE. I'm going to execute the ESP32 sketch data upload. Just click it. Now it's copying. One thing you need to be careful of is that if the data is bigger than the SPIFF size of the partition scheme, the data cannot be transferred. Uh, please select an option that suits you in the partition scheme. Uh, let's check if the image files are properly stored in the flash memory. It takes a little coding to see the list of the files in SPIFFS, but I will bring this with me from the example provided by TJPEG decoder. Also, in order to draw JPEG on the screen, you need to use this library. Please install it through the library manager unless you have it. Let me open the one example from TJPEG decoder. Uh, go to examples, uh, tjpeg decoder, select the web jpg. Uh, here you are. It includes two other header files. Please open the list spiff header on the next tab. I'm gonna bring the function of list spiffs to my project. And also include the spiffs header in my project. Uh, the setup function includes not only the serial communication part, but also the SPIFFS initialization part, then called list SPIFFS. That's it. This allows me to see a list of the files in the memory. Let's build them on node. Uh, you can get a list of the files currently stored in the memory on the serial monitor. You can see a total of 24 JPG images saved properly. It looks good. What we need to do is output JPG images directly on the IPS panel, not a list. I will copy what I need from the example. The JPEG decoder is required to print JPG image on the screen. Uh, TFT ESPI is a graphic driver that is associated with the hardware. Uh, without this, it's not ready to draw on the screen. Uh, this is callback function used to print JPG images on the screen. It's necessary to use TJPEG decoder. I will complete the part that initializes the TFT. After starting TFT, you must specify the orientation of the screen. Uh, if the TTGO logo on the hardware is in the landscape mode to the left, it's 1, and 3 is for landscape to the right. Uh, for your information, 0 and 2 are in portrait mode. 
the rest of the settings for the JPEG decoder. I will leave it as the default setting. What you need to do in the loop is to output the images one by one. To do this, you need to provide an accurate image path. In my case, the image exists from 0 to 23. Increase the image number by 1, and if it's 24 or greater, it needs to go back to the beginning. I will complete the image path including this image number. I simply add the necessary part to the string variable. Uh, there are three parameters required to invoke the drawFSJPEG function of the tjpeg decoder. Uh, they are the starting xy coordinates and the path of the image file. Since the image has already been sized to the screen size, the starting coordinates are 0 and 0 and the image path was completed with the string. Uh, let me see the final result. Uh, several JPG images are being displayed properly on the screen. It's an IPS panel, so you can see it well in the bright places. Uh, I made this video for those who are starting with ESP32 TTGO. I look forward to continuing interesting projects with this in the future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next project.